in 2008, if you would have asked me to sit down with the 700 Club, I would have been like, are you serious? Like, no way, like you can keep your Jesus and do what you want with that, but I'm over here and I'm gonna do my thing for myself. It's crazy to think what God can do to someone who is so obsessed with himself, lay him flat on his face and say, David, you're not gonna be the ruler of your life. Just looking back at when I had this dream of wanting to become an Olympian and that pursuit towards that goal, I tried to fill that with whatever I could because I thought ultimately this would bring me happiness and joy. And it was all for David's glory, all for what David wanted. And I didn't worship anyone else besides myself. Everything that I thought of, everything that I pursued was for my own gain. My first Olympic Games, I just realized that it wasn't working. Something, there had to be something else besides this popularity or this pleasure or this desire that I had to be rich and famous that this American dream promised me. There had to be something more than that. And I didn't know where to find that. God changed my heart and it was no longer, look at me, I'm the best. Trying to be a, a visible representation of an invisible God that that's not the David of 2008. God has redeemed me and I've taken control of my life to, to do that for him on a, on a platform that I never thought I would be at. The London Games was not a story I would have written whatsoever. Going into the finals, I was like the most nervous that I had been in a competition since I was 14 years old. And I spoke to a good friend of mine and he said, David, what is there to be nervous about? And I was like, okay, what are you getting at? And he said, uh, God has already written it. It's already done. What you get to do, what your opportunity is, is to be a vehicle for his glory. And so like instantly the weight was off of my shoulders. I just think of Philippians 4, 6, it just talks about be anxious about nothing, but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And that was, that was totally my perspective that next day when I woke up was, was that. My six dives in those finals, um, I was thinking about two things. I had one cue, one thing to think about of, of my takeoff, so making it strong. And the other one was something my coach Adam Soldati and I kind of made up years before the Olympics and it was 4-6. And it just goes back to Philippians 4-6, that's be anxious about nothing. I knew that I put down six dives, the best that I've ever done in a competition. And I got out of the water and I, I didn't care where I was finishing, whether I was first or fifth. Um, I was content and happy because I, I knew I did my best. And I walked over to Adam and uh, he embraced me and hugged me and I looked up and my name was first. One Chinese diver still had to go, and he hit the water. My name didn't change, and I still couldn't fathom. Like, so, so my name's first, and there's no divers left. What? That means I won. And it was. It's still a surreal moment to think, think back at that that specific moment. Three months after the Olympics in, in 2012, I got married to my wife, Sunny. And then two years after that, we had our first child, Dakota. And so I get to be dad. I get to be David, the husband. And it's a totally different thing. God has grown me so much in my communication with my wife. First year after the Olympics, it was atrocious. Just me trying to communicate and learn how to navigate marriage. And uh, he's grown me in that so much. And then uh, ultimately trying to, to raise a little girl that fears the Lord. The road to Rio leading up to that, I think God has, has shamed me most at um, really wanting me to be responsible and to pursue excellence. Romans 8, 28 says, God works everything for the good of those who love him that are called according to his purpose. And that purpose isn't for my happiness and my joy. That purpose is so that I become more like Christ daily.